When President Biden kicks off a multi-day campaign swing this week, he's going to be doing it with a pocket full of newly earned campaign cash. But he's reportedly carrying some political baggage as well. NBC News interviewed nearly 20 lawmakers, administration officials and Biden allies who say, quote, frustrations rippling through the party have reached the top with Biden at times second guessing travel decisions and communication strategies that have left much of the electorate clueless about his record. And joining me now, Republican strategist Susan Del Percio, former White House press secretary for President Obama, Robert Gibbs, and Jennifer Palmieri, former communications director to President Obama and campaign advisor to Hillary Clinton. I'm glad that you guys are with us. We've got a great panel. Jen, let me start with you. Our sources, as we just reported, tell my colleagues that President Biden has recently lashed out at some of his staff. Given his successes passing bills and improving the economy, quote, Biden was irritated his message was not sinking in with a broader electorate. So is he right to be second guessing given his low approval ratings in polls right now? I was in Wisconsin recently, and when it comes to infrastructure, the CHIPS Act and some others, a lot of those who support the president or have in the past really aren't familiar with some of his biggest successes to this point. I think that's because you can't get those kinds of successes to break through in this media environment without paid media. And the good news for the president is that he has raised a lot of money and that the, the campaign, you see, you see this now both on television and in digital, and they are targeting their media to, um, you know, for specific accomplishments to, to specific demographics. And they're, you know, with all, with all the targeting tools that are available to you now and the different eco, media ecosystems, you're able to do that. I understand why he He's frustrated. You should be, um, given everything that he's accomplished and, and where poll numbers still are. You know, poll numbers are a curious thing. I don't think people really are going to—I would not—I um, would—you know, the, the numbers, when you want, expect that to move, will be late, late, much later than the president would like, probably the summer, maybe even fall. Um, and, you know, but what's great about Biden is he asks a lot of questions. I, you know, I worked in the Obama White House, so I worked with him. He asks a lot of questions. You call it second guessing. He pushes. This is like something he does. But he's also a loyal boss. And he knows not to undermine the team, right? So fine, ask a lot of questions, be frustrated, but he's not undermining the team. I want to ask you about this, if I can, Robert, for a second. The number, what, $53 million, just raised $155 million or so cash on hand right now. We just heard from Jen a little bit about the competitive advantage that gives you, the ability to buy the paid media, where you get to go around the media and speak directly to Americans via commercials and other advertising right now. But you've been through this before. What does the White House need to do now to help benefit itself in getting its message out. They haven't been able to amplify this message in the way that they believe they should have to this point. Well, I, I agree with Jen. I mean, the, it starts with using a pile of that big pile of money and putting it directly in front of voters, uh, showing them what's happened, showing them how that impacts them, and then constantly reminding them day after day from now until Election Day. Th that those two money figures that you showed, that's a structural advantage right now for this White House. Uh, we, we read over the weekend stories of really the, the Trump campaign scurrying to try to raise, uh, desperately raise money, knowing they're getting farther and farther behind, as donors worry more and more about whether their contributions are going to a campaign or to pay Trump's legal bills. But look, I, I, I also read that longer story I think the tension that is being uh, uh, talked about in that story is a good tension. I think the president wanting to be out there talking to voters, uh, campaigning every day, I, I think that's the kind of excitement Democrats want to feel from the White House and the campaign and from the president. And, and I think, look, this is we've got a long way to go. Uh, they're not going to fix all of this in a day or in a week. Uh, we saw that in 2012. It's a it's a long game, and I think uh, they've got a good plan to play that long game. Susan, I want your take on this for a second, right? Because I think a lot of people watch this and hear, oh, Biden has the money advantage. But Donald Trump has sort of rewritten so many other rules. It almost feels like money is no matter. It doesn't matter if he's spending money on his own legal cases or on campaigning because so much attention, you know, is sort of sucked into this Trump vortex. The media, I acknowledge, plays a role in that right now. How, how challenging is this issue for former President Trump, who to this point we have seen in every campaign before it, really does face a ceiling that he hasn't been able to surpass? 
Well, it is a big challenge for Donald Trump because when you look at the national polls, I get why you know you can look at that and why Biden may be frustrated. But here's the thing, Peter: when you start looking at the swing states, we're coming down to seven, nine states, and the organization needed. Donald Trump just took apart the RNC, the Republican National Committee, and is broke. You can't build organization from the ground up. That's one of, in part, one of the reasons why the Democrats are in a good position, because they keep growing their ground game. And I understand it could be frustrating for the president, President Biden, but you know what? They're also spending a lot of money in targeting online media. Yeah. And that's stuff that we don't typically see because it's not targeted to us. So I think operationally is where the Republicans, and it won't be just Donald Trump that suffers because of this, especially with the RNC takedown. The ground yeah. game is hurting. Yeah, no, you make really good points. I can't tell you how many allies of the president I hear from right now who say the real priority over the course of the next several months is going to be those low information, sporadic voters, right? The folks who are not hearing this conversation right now, who you really need to get to where they receive information. And it's likely not on cable or network television. It's from a variety of other places. Jen, we're looking at pictures right now. You can see the president marching down the line, shaking hands as he enjoys doing, just made remarks uh, for Women's History Month, said again that if he has the votes in Congress, Congress, he will restore Roe v. Wade. It really is this community, the community of women in America, that has, on this issue, benefited Democrats so strongly in the course of the last couple years. We saw Kamala Harris at an abortion clinic in Minnesota, the first time a president or vice president has ever done that while in office. How crucial is getting the women's community or all communities that are affected by the issue of reproductive rights to engage? I think it'll be the margin of victory. Um, you know, I suspect he, I, 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 I think it's going to be a close race, but I feel that Biden's going to win. I think this issue will be the will be among the issues that that drives uh, voters to him. And I just I think we underestimate uh, just how powerful it was, um, not just for women, but for a lot of women, uh, particularly women in the suburbs. Um, you know, this, the kind of counties that he needs to win when this happened. Um, it continue every couple of months. Uh, the 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 real impact of returning Attorney Roe uh, has on, you know, on women's lives reveals itself. Alabama IVF ruling is the most recent s stunning example of that. Um, and I just, you know, I, I think it is, it's an extraordinarily motivating issue. Yeah, to be very clear, reproductive rights, not just a women's issue, a women's and men's and all Americans issue as well. Susan Del Percio, always nice to see you. Robert Gibbs, remotely as it is. And Jen Palmieri, I appreciate you making time to talk to me too.